Welcome to this tutorial. Uh, in the previous tutorials, we've already seen what are the advantages of having Spring act as a container for our beans. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to look at one more advantage, and uh, this is something that Spring provides for us. It provides us with uh, callback methods for the life cycle of the bean. You can have a method in your bean that gets run when the bean is being created, and you can have a method in your bean which runs when the bean is about to be destroyed. So you can tap into these callbacks and write your own code to initialize the bean or to do any cleanup activities after the bean is destroyed. So we'll have a look at that, but before we do that, there's one more point that I'd like to say here. Uh, we have written this code here, which initializes the application context, and uh, we get a bean from the application context. But we haven't actually closed the application context here. In order to close the application context, we need to use another class, which is called the abstract application context, and that registers a shutdown hook for your uh, Java program so that when your main method ends, then uh, the you know the hook is called and then uh, the context also shuts down. This is something you'll have to do only for SE applications. If you have, uh, say, a web application context or you're integrating with an enterprise application, the Spring context will know when to end. But if you're writing a desktop application, then you will have to register this hook. So since this is a Java, simple Java desktop application, I'll be registering the hook and I'll be doing this so that we can demonstrate the callback methods, the destroy callback methods later. So all I need to do here is I need to first change from application context to an abstract application context. Now the abstract application context again has the same signatures. So this is uh, something that I inherit from context.support. Now this will have the same signatures. I don't have to do any other changes here. It will still do a get bean. But then what I can do here is, uh, when I'm initializing itself, I can do a context dot, there is a register shutdown hook method for this context. So I can make a call here so that the shutdown hook is registered and when the application ends, the Spring context also knows that it's time for it to close and destroy all the beans. So now that we have done this, when the program ends, when the main ends, a destroy is called for all the beans if we configure it that way. So now we'll look at how we can configure init methods and destroy methods on all the beans. Now I have this triangle bean over here. Now let's say I want to call a method when the bean is initialized and I want to call another method when the bean is to be destroyed. So what I can do is, there are different ways in which we can do this. We'll look at a couple of methods in this tutorial, and then we'll look at a few more in the subsequent tutorials. So let's look at init first. In order to have a method that to get initialized when the bean is called, what I can do is I can implement an interface called initializing bean. I'll have to import this. from beans.factory. Now this interface tells uh, Spring that my bean needs to know when it's being initialized. So I'm telling Spring that this bean needs to be called, a method of this bean needs to be called when um, the bean is being initialized. Now initializing bean has a method that needs to be implemented. So if I say add the unimplemented methods, you get a method called after property set. Now what this is going to do is I can write any code here and then this is the method that Spring is going to call when it's initialized, when all the properties have been set. So first of all, this implements initializing bean is a marker for bean to know that a method of this bean needs to be called after initialization. And then what is the method to be called? This is the one, this is again provided in the interface itself. So if we can uh, implement it, you can write any code here and this will get executed when the bean has finished initialization. Okay, so now I can write some code here. I'll just write a system dot out dot println. I'll say initializing beans init method called for triangle. Okay, just a simple print statement. Now, this is all that I need to do. I don't need to do anything else. So I 
implement initializing bean so that Spring knows that this bean has to be, uh, when it's initialized, a method of this bean has to be called. And the method, of course, is the default after property set. So I can write code here, and this will run when the when the when the bean is initialized. So let's run this. We'll save this. And when I run this. You can see that the initialization method has been called before you're getting your print statement. So this is the first piece of code that gets executed inside this bean. Similarly, for uh, capturing the destroy phase, there is another interface called disposable bean. And I'll have to import this as well. Now the disposable bean again has a method that will be called when the bean has to be destroyed. So if you add the unimplemented methods, then you can see that there is a destroy method. So if a bean implements a disposable bean interface, then Spring will automatically call a destroy method of that bean before actually destroying the bean. So here I can write any code and that will get executed just before the bean gets destroyed. So any cleanup code and anything like that will go inside this method. So I'll again print a, a simple message here just to know that it's running. So I'll call this disposable beans destroy method called for the triangle. Okay, let's run this again and make sure it works fine. Well, it does. So first initializing beans init method is called then the flow of execution goes ahead and then we have a disposable beans method called. So this is happening when the application ends because we have registered the, the shutdown hook. So when the main method ends, the shutdown hook gets called and the Spring container says, okay, it's time to wrap up. Now it's gonna destroy all the beans and then that's when the destroy method gets called. So no matter how many beans you have in your container, whatever beans implements these uh, interfaces, the corresponding uh, methods are called. So you can have a bean that implements only the disposable bean. In that case, the bean needs to have only the destroy method. It doesn't need to have this one. And then this destroy method gets called only on the destruction of the bean. And similarly, uh, only this one gets called on init if you implement only the initializing bean. So this is one of the ways in which we can write init and destroy methods. Uh, the disadvantage of this method is you are implementing interfaces that are specific to Spring. So you see here, it's from org.springframework.beans. So these are specific to Spring and you'll have to modify the class. Now let's say you don't want to modify the class. You don't want to write some inf interfaces. You, want, you don't want to implement interfaces that are specific to Spring and you don't want to bind your beans to Spring itself. Then what we can do is, there is another way to do this. Let me remove this. So I'm not implementing any special interfaces. I'm going to comment this whole section. Okay, so I'm not doing anything specific to uh, Spring. Okay, I'll have to remove these imports as well. So what I'll do is, I will just write two simple methods, okay, that has nothing to do with Spring itself, but these are methods that I want to run on init and destroy. So let me call this public void my init. Okay, so this is my separate init method, which is not at all related to Spring. And now I will have some code inside this in order to do some initialization work. So I want this init method, my init, to run when the bean is initialized. So there's another way we can do this, and this is by configuring it in the XML itself. So what I do is I go to the Spring XML, and in my triangle bean definition, what I'll do is I will have a init method value and I pass the name of the method. Let's save this. So what's going to happen is Spring is going to see that this init method definition is there. Now this is the method that Spring is going to call for this bean alone when the bean is being initialized. So now let me run this again. So here you can see the my init method is called for triangle. So this has been registered as an initialization method in the Spring XML. So if you do this, there's really no need to uh, you know implement anything. So this is just a simple pojo, and I just have a method here. Again, this is not Spring specific. All I'm doing is in my XML, I am 
mentioning what's the method that Spring has to run as an init method. And if this value is found by Spring, then for this bean, it's going to run this method upon initialization. Same way, I can write a destroy method as well. So whatever method I write, okay? So let me call this void. Say you have some cleanup method that needs to be run. And uh, this is again, not bound to Spring. What you can do is in your spring.xml, you can write another tag here, destroy method equals clean up. Save this. Okay, it's u uppercase. So now I have specified an init method and a destroy method in my spring.xml for this bean. So what's going to happen is it's going to be the same as what we saw earlier, but instead of having an interface of Spring that it, that's implemented here, we're going to have simple methods that are called by Spring because we have configured it to do so. So let me have another uh, print statement here. A cleanup method called for triangle. So you have the initialization and the destroy method that we have defined. So it's going to have the same behavior. First, the init method is called, and then the flow of execution, and then the final cleanup method. Now, instead of configuring the init method and the destroy method for every bean, so let's say that this is a common practice in your application, that initialization methods are always called my init, and uh, the cleanup or the destroy methods are always called cleanup. In that case, you don't have to configure this for each and every bean. What we can do is we can configure it globally across all the beans. And what Spring is going to do is it's going to look for a method like this. If it is there, it's going to call it. Otherwise, it's going to ignore it. So if you have a standard where you say for all my beans, init method is going to have a common name and a destroy method is going to have a common name. In that case, you can configure these init methods and destroy methods at a global level and you don't have to configure it for each and every bean like this. So the way to configure this at a global level is by putting the configuration over here. There is this bean stag which encloses all these bean definitions. Over here I can have a default init method and a default destroy method. So I just say default init method equals my init. and default destroy method equals cleanup. So if we do this, then we don't have to mention it at a bean level. We can remove these values and it's configured at globally. So this is gonna apply for all the beans. Now later, if I add a my init or a cleanup method for these point objects, it's going to call them as well. So let's run this once again to validate. Well, there you go. The same methods have been called. Now, what happens if I enable both? We saw two two ways in which we can have these uh, initialization and destroy callbacks, right? So one is by implementing uh, a couple of interfaces and have a separate set of methods for those, and then having these methods of our own and then configuring Spring to call them. Now, what if we have both? Actually, both of them get executed. We'll have a look at the order. So let's say I revert this back. Implements, initializing bean and disposable bean. Now I'll fix the imports. And of course I'll have to implement the methods. So I'm gonna uncomment these two methods and save. So now we are doing both. First of all, we are implementing the initializing bean and the disposable bean interfaces and providing those methods so that Spring can call them. Additionally, we are also implementing two separate methods and we are configuring Spring to call them in the XML file. So now what's the order in which they're going to run? Now if we run this, so here you can see the first initializing beans init method is called, then the init method that we have configured is called. Then of course the execution flow and then the print statements and then again when it is closing first the disposable is called and then our method is called. So initializing bean and disposable bean take priority. Those are the methods that get called first and then after that 
whatever init method and destroy method that we configure in the spring.xml, those get called later. There is a third way in which we can do this, and that's by using annotations. We're going to look at it a few tutorials down the line, but uh, these methods also come in handy. You can use them in order to do initialization and clean up work for your spring beans.